What's up guys? My name is Lisa He of Borderlands Bakery and today I'm sharing a recipe for these easy cream cheese Christmas cookies. They are super cute, super easy to make. Be nice if I didn't drop them. Um, and you can pipe them in a variety of shapes and all you do is just dye the dough. So it's very kind of low effort, high impact sort of cookie design. Just in case anyone was curious, look at how cute this shirt is. It's um, gift. It was actually gifted to me by my friend Alva, Bento Kitchen, and it's made by my friend Krista over at The Domestic Cookie. So if you want one, see the link down below. We're going to give you an overview of the materials, but make sure to check the description box for the recipe and the measurements for every individual item. We're going to be using cream cheese, powdered sugar, shortening. I'm using Crisco, one egg, flour, vanilla extract, and granulated sugar. This is going to be my main mixing bowl and I'm using a hand mixer today. I have a Breville hand mixer. I'll link it for you guys. It's pretty fancy. I'll show you why later. You're also going to need some piping templates. I have the templates included whoops, in the blog post linked down below this video. And then we've got some food coloring to color our Santa hats, stockings, wreaths, an extra mixing bowl a little spatula to color small batches of our dough, a cup, some of our tipless piping bags. These are my brand Borderlands Bakery. I'll show you how to use them, but basically we put the piping bags in the cups. And then finally, I have some baking sheets that I also link um, my favorite brands and stuff in our blog post. First things first, we are going to take our shortening as well as our cream cheese. Make sure that these guys are both at room temperature. And we're going to cream them with our sugar, eggs, and vanilla. So this is the powdered sugar. Going in. Granulated sugar. Going in. I'm going to cream this first before adding the egg. So I've got the paddle mixers. Basically, you can do this in a stand mixer as well. I don't recommend doing it by hand because that's going to be a lot of work. Um, and the Breville is fancy because it's got a light at the end of it. And it's also got these um, silicone thingies at the bottom of the beaters. And that prevents it from making a bunch of noise while you're creaming your fat and sugars together. I kind of like that. All right, so that's good. Let's add the vanilla. I measure straight into the cap, but of course, if you're not familiar with measurements, please go ahead and make sure you use measuring spoons. I'm gonna add in the egg direct. And then we're gonna cream it again. Make sure everything is well combined. Scrape down the sides if you need to. And combine again. It's a pretty um, loose batter at this point. And now we're going to add in all of the flour at once. Make sure you sift your flour if it's got lumps in it, but otherwise go ahead and throw it in all in one go. And then carefully combine so that the flour doesn't get everywhere. Start slow. You want to combine it until it is just 
incorporated, the flour is just incorporated, I'm actually going to finish up the rest of the mixing with my spatula as to not overwork the gluten that's in the flour. I've got my dough here. I'm going to set it aside and use this bowl that I had measured my flour into previously to color batches of my icing. But before we do that, I want to show you this original color here is going to be used for, let me show you, kind of the rims of the hats and the little pom-poms as well as on the, on the um, oh my gosh, stockings, the trim of the stockings. So we are going to be using a little bit of white, not too much, and I will load the white first. So I'm gonna take one of my piping bags, I'm gonna stick my hand in it, my clean hand, and we're gonna drop it into the bag and pull the sides around the edges of the cup. I'm gonna take some of my batter, not too much, because we're using very little of the white. I'd say like less than a cup for sure of the cookie dough. Just giving the top a twist and you can either tie this or use one of our bag clips to kind of clip it. You can get these bag clips over at borderlandsbakery.com too. They're really strong and good for securing pretty much anything, not just piping bags. Now I'm gonna color the rest of my dough. So I'm gonna take about a little bit, around half of what's remaining of the dough and dividing it, and I'm going to add food color to it. Now you can use a gel food color, you can use um, airbrush food color. I am choosing to use airbrush food color today because that's what I have easily accessible. And I'm just going to color my dough until it gets to the right consistency. Now I don't wanna mix this, again, way too much, so I'm trying not to work the crap out of my dough and really using my instincts to gauge whether or not I need more um, food coloring, but I think this is gonna be fine. I don't really wanna use any more food coloring. And you can mix it until it's totally homogenous in color, or you can leave little streaks in it, no big deal. I think I'm going to try to get most of the streaks um, worked out. but it doesn't need to be perfect. These are supposed to be quick, fun, easy cookies. Okay. Now we're going to load that into our piping bag. This time I'm using a medium piping bag. The difference between our small and medium piping bags is about two inches. So one is about 10 inches, one is about 12 inches, and that two inches gives you a lot more room in the piping bag. So same thing, loading up the piping bag. use a bigger cup or just roll the edges up a little bit. I'm just going to twist, set that aside while I color the red that's in the original mixing bowl. We're done coloring all of our doughs, and now we're going to place our templates underneath our baking mats and then pipe our cookies. Let's start with the easy one, which is the wreath. We're going to slide it right under to give us a guide for piping these cookies.
you're going to trim off the tip of the piping bag. So our piping bags come with one seam down the center and you're going to basically line up the seam with the middle, pinch the top and then trim a bit off. I am trimming today about a little bit less than one centimeter across. This will vary depending on the size of the wreath that you're trying to make. And the way I'm piping is I'm holding my non-dominant hand on the top and my dominant hand on the bottom, which is going to be the one doing most of the control detail precision work. So you can kind of see the templates right here and I'm just going to pipe in circles. So I'm going to twist a little bit so I don't have to apply too much pressure and hold towards the bottom. And I'm just going to pipe circles, making sure that my batter makes really good contact with the mat because I really need the batter to adhere to the mat. And we're just gonna go in circles and these cookies will expand, but not too much, so keep that in mind. Make sure they have just enough space in between each wreath. And as you practice, your wreaths are gonna get better and better looking, so make sure you are gentle with yourself. Depending on how big your cookies are and how thick your cookies are, the, uh, the baking time will vary, so adjust accordingly. Now, right next to the wreaths, I've slid my stockings. I put the stocking template under and I'm going to trim my bags. This time, I'm going to trim the holes a little smaller because we're doing a little bit more of a detailed work. So I'm going about half the size of the wreaths and then if that doesn't work, I will cut bigger. You can always cut bigger, but you can't go smaller. So starting with the white, I'm actually going to go up and down to create some texture. Oh man, okay, this hole is a little too small. So let's trim it and cut it bigger. So for sure the red one will need to be bigger too. But basically you might have to play with it. Yeah, that's a much better size. Whoop, you can't see that. <laughs> okay. So I started with a small hole and now we made it bigger. So let's do another one right here. Zigzag back and forth to create the trim for your stocking. And then for the actual stocking itself, I'm just gonna do squeeze hard, allowing the batter to pull around you and then just kind of end it. Squeeze, 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 move, applying even pressure, and then pull it back to end it. Super cute little stocking cookies. All right, so your cookies are all piped and you're going to bake them in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about eight to 10 minutes. Probably because these are small, it's gonna be more toward the eight minute mark. And because they are a cream cheese based and very soft cookie, it's gonna be very hard to tell when they're done. So keep an eye on it, do a test batch, and then based on that, adjust accordingly. So our cookies just came out of the oven and this is what they look like. As you can tell, they keep their shape really, really well. And they haven't browned, which is exactly what I want. So these came out of the oven and they are pretty much cool. This is the one that we did. Oh, I broke it. Well, that's real life. So you want to make sure that because they're very soft that you pipe them very close to each other. But this is what they would look like if you attach sprinkles on directly to the dough. Now I've got some white chocolate in here. I've melted it in the microwave. Um, it's actually almond bark, which melts a little bit easier and dries a little bit smoother with less fuss than white chocolate. I put it directly into one of my tipless piping bags and microwaved it at 30 second intervals and, and massaging it kind of in between each interval until it was quite liquefied. 
And you can go ahead and just drizzle onto your wreath and then adhere sprinkles to that white chocolate. These cookies aren't very sweet by themselves, so a little bit of white chocolate to help it out will be good if you have a little bit more of a sweet tooth.